Hello and welcome to another possibly exciting, possibly terrible episode of Chicken and Raffles' Choose Your Own Adventure Adventures, where I read a Choose Your Own Adventure book and then give it a rating based on the adventure that I had. Today we're going to be reading Endless Quest number four, Return to Brookmere by Rose Estes. She wrote the last one that I read also. Looking at the cover of the book, I can look forward to meeting the Great Rat King from that one Queen song that you don't know what I'm talking about, never mind. Right away I can tell this is going to be great. As soon as I open up the book, there's a picture of a dog man with Danzig hair and a trilobite necklace. So that, I hope, I hope this is the adventure that I go on and not something stupider than that. This book seems to be a lot more Dungeons and Dragonsy than the last one. This first page is basically our character sheet. We are Brian, only spelled all stupid. I mean all fantasy. We are a 100 pound elven fighter with shoulder length honey blonde hair. As we all know, elves have elven sight, which lets us see objects up to 60 feet away in the dark by the heat they give off. Although elves are not as strong as humans, they are very clever and quick. Elves are able to speak the languages of orcs, goblins, hobgoblins, and gnolls, as well as the common language of humans. Let's go talk to an orcs, maybe. Despite being so thorough as to tell us our weight on the last page, it didn't seem to mention us having a king for a dad. But we have a king for a dad. For your adventure, your father, King Cedrus, has given you a finely made suit of silvery chainmail that covers you from head to waist. Chainmail looks like a heavy knit silver sweater, but it's woven from metal, not wool. That's. We also have a sword, a shield, and a knife, and a food and water pouch that I'm just gonna imagine is two different pouches and not. And not just one pouch. It just says it just says this it just says this one pouch. Okay, there's still more. We're wearing a the fabled the mouth of Mimulus, which lets us drum roll, please. Talk to anything. We can talk to anything, which we basically could already do, as long as they were one of those several things I named off earlier. You are leading a party of four elven fighters on a scouting mission to the ruins of your former home. Okay, the short version is, during whatever the Great Hunger was, monsters took over our beloved home of Castle Brookmere. And this is great. Your last memory of your beloved home is of foul monsters screaming insults at you from your captured castle's walls. Broken with grief, your father shook his fist at the ugly faces and vowed to return one day. I just thought that was kind of a funny, just kind of a funny image. We're immediately separated from the group when we fall down a flight of stairs that leads to what used to be the castle's treasure vault. We have the choice to either climb back up and look for our friends, explore the passageway, or think about our choices before we move on. I'm pretty sure these books are geared toward people like me that don't have time for friends, or sitting, or thinking. So, be it is. We now have a very probably pointless and stupid character in the form of the Mouth of Mimulus, which likes to be called Mim because Rose Estes hates children. Mim suggests we go back up and find our supplies and our friends. This isn't a choice, it's just something that happens. You find your supplies and light a torch, but there is no trace of your friends. After searching carefully, you realize sadly that they are buried beneath the rockfall. Holy shit, they're dead. Like, we literally never mention this again, and I'm pretty sure our friends are just dead. Mim thinks he knows a secret passageway, but because I hate everything Mim stands for, I'm going to do the opposite of that. We're faced with two tunnels. One of them is rumbling and the other one is glowing green. The book seems to be telling me that we're going to die if we go in the cave with the rumble, so let's glow the other way. We enter a smelly room with an easily walk-aroundable boulder, but there's some green slime dripping from the ceiling that Mim warns could be some sort of dangerous cave slime. We're too stupid to avoid getting some on us, but it turns out it's just boring old cave mushroom juice, and we're fine. Unrelated, because writing is hard, a room opens up and there's a knoll wearing all kinds of jewels and shit talking to a salamander. I was not ready for what happened next. The knoll sits with its back to you and cries to the salamander. They had no right to go off and leave me. I can't help it if I'm different than the rest. I don't like hurting and killing people. All those nasty orcs hanging around all the time gave me the creeps. I tried. I really did. But I couldn't learn to like tearing people limb from limb and all those other awful knoll things. They always laughed at me because I was different. I've always liked pretty, shiny things. Golgal said to me, Nashnath, you'll never amount to anything. 
The only thing a real gnoll thinks about is destruction. You just stay here and play with your pretties. If and when you learn to act like a real gnoll, you can join us. Until then, stay here with the rats and salamanders. Then they left me. I don't think that's fair. Do you? The salamander doesn't answer. Because Rose Estes loves children. Apparently we could just go around this guy, and I'm a little scared because the only choice to interact with him says if you want to fight the gnoll, and that's the opposite of being best friends with him, I think I have to try it because this is the best path for this book to go down. Well, shit. All we did was scare him away. Crying, I might add. But now the way to the treasure room is clear, so off to page 55 to hopefully get a dope sword that'll replace the loss of our dead friends who died. The only treasure appears to be two heavily armed hobgoblins, which is a pretty shitty treasure. We Scooby-Doo dress up, barely, and then have the option to either jump out of the closet and attack the hobgoblins, or do the actual plan. I'm gonna do the actual plan. This is kind of great because it feels like I'm not actually doing something at random right now. We overhear an orc talking about some hobgoblins that were bullying him and he's looking to kill the next one he sees. And that's us because of the Scooby-Doo thing from the last page. But because we're smart boys, we say we were sent by the other hobgoblins to apologize. And he turns into a real cool guy for a second and lets us into the monster meeting that was apparently about to happen. I haven't mentioned this yet and it's not really relevant, but almost every page starts with the word corridor. Something to think about. Look, here it is, right here. I just turned to a random page. It just starts with corridor. Everything. It's all, it's all corridors all the time with this book. The meeting is called to order as a rat jumps onto our dad's king chair. It's hinted in the book that our dad committed some sort of rat genocide before being deposed. The rat grows to the size of a large rat. And then he grows to the size of other animals that are larger than a rat until he's a full-on man-sized rat man. A were-rat! As Brian, we are a veritable Pokedex, noting that rats can change the form of a giant rat, a man-sized rat man, or just a full-sized human for when he needs to go grocery shopping or whatever. Were-rats are also apparently really good leaders because the other monsters just kind of listen to him. Oh, they are really good leaders. Turns out Frank the Rat Man here has been rallying the other monsters together to hunt some sort of eldritch horror that's been stalking Brookmere and killing the shit out of everybody. He lays down the law and gets the goblins and the gnolls and even the kobolds. Not the kobolds? Well, fuck them. But everybody else is on board to kill this thing. So, great, hooray! The monsters adjourn their meeting and politely go about their day. We're given another seemingly random left corridor, right corridor choice, and I don't remember what I did last time, so left it is. Okay, this is full on crazy now. It starts with, there's an eight foot weasel eating orc bodies. It goes to, oh, that's my pet weasel that I thought was dead, and it's not. All the way to, I remember this weasel's weasel mom telling me bedtime stories, and I'm getting choked up. Thinking of all the bedtime stories the weasel used to tell me which was very confusing the first time I read it, and the next couple of times I read it, until I realized that elves can talk to weasels. We throw off our goblin cloak and give Sissel the weasel friend a belly rub before he fills us in. Turns out, him and his unknown number of siblings have been running around the tunnels of Brookmere, killing monsters, which is the payoff for that monster meeting we were literally just at, so good payoff, good setup and payoff. That's how you do it. One, then the other. It's just like an episode of Seinfeld. They, they set up the conflict and then in the next scene they resolve it and then there's just more stuff after that. Writing. The plan is to use the directions that the weasel gave us to go back and find our king dad, tell him that the weasels are inside and start the attack again and it'll work because weasels are there. So that's the plan. And this is where the book loses major points because the last choice doesn't even matter. We get our directions from our weasel friend and literally the only difference the last choice makes is how much blood you end up with on your hands. Do you want to kill two kobolds? Use the disguise from before. Want to kill six kobolds and also get stabbed a little bit? Do the other thing. It's almost exactly the same wording as what bothers me the most. In any case, it's implied that the plan works and that they get to return to Brookmere. Great. Good. So this one's kind of a mixed bag for me. I like the character sheet aspect, but I don't think it was actually utilized all that well. I get that I was able to talk to weasels, but that didn't actually matter because I, that was my weasel. 
he was my weasel, so he probably wouldn't have killed me anyway. I would have recognized him. He had a star on his... That's my weasel. I wanted to talk to a bugbear or an orc or a goblins or a, a mimic or something. I didn't get to talk to anything interesting. I could. I talked to that one orc and the hobgoblins. That's not even fun. I had the mouth of Mimulus. Let me talk to a... I, th Wait, wait, I could do this. Fuck, where's the slime? <laughs> Look at this! I didn't run into the, this guy. I could have talked to a sl I could have talked to a gelatinous cube. Also, I don't know if this came down to like a studio decision from TSR. TSR needed it, or if this is a Rose Estes problem. But getting a stupid fucking talking sidekick every book is pretty pretty bad. All of Mim's dialogue read exactly like foxes and owls from Pillars of Pentagon, and it sucked. It's not fun to read a wisecracking fucking idiot the whole goddamn thing. Go watch... Uh, uh, go... Okay. Go watch the Star uh, Pod Racer. Go... Go... Uh, Jar Jar Binks. That's the one. I like Frank the Rat Man, but he didn't actually ever know we were in Brookmere, so that's bad stakes. Because uh, Frank is scary. Frank can turn into a guy and trick you into thinking he's a guy, or be a big rat, or be a rat man. And he didn't even ever know we were in the castle. That would have been a confrontation I would have liked. At least the last one I actually got to fight the Dark Master. I get to do shit in this book. The best part of the book was this knoll that I never got to be best friends with, and the worst part of the book was the fact that I got all my friends killed at the beginning of the book. I'm gonna call this one a 5 out of 10 adventure, citing the lack of my choices actually mattering at the end, and an over-reliance on the word corridor. If you ran into the knoll and you got to be best friends with him, write me in the comments, because although I can read, I was never taught to reread. Thanks for watching. And next time I won't take seven months to make one of these.